<clears throat> okay, y'all, I wanted to do a, a few more exercises for section 7.2. So um, <clears throat> I'm gonna go over a few things just to give you a taste of how these problems work and some of the ways that you should think your way through it, okay? So these problems are coming directly from the back of the book. The numbers that go with them correspond to the numbers in the back of the book. So if you wanna read the problems for yourself or look at them, uh, then there you can use those numbers to figure it out, okay? <clears throat> okay, so problem one gives you a, a table, a frequency table, and it tells you that these are the grades and the possible grades in the class. And these are the number of individuals that receive those given grades. So for exercise one, you're being asked to compute the relative frequency for the frequency table, okay? So in order, the uh, most important thing we need for a relative frequency calculation is that we need a grand total for the frequency. So we need to add up all these numbers and get a grand total. Okay, let's see if that's visible. So I'm taking two plus four plus eight plus six plus five. Let's see if I can get the angle better here. A little bit better, I suppose. So I'm adding up all of the, oops, all right. I'm adding up all of the frequencies with the calculator and are given in the table. And that gives us a grand total of 25, okay? So to compute the relative frequencies, what we're gonna do is take the individual frequencies. All right, having trouble here, people. There we go, That's, that looks good, okay. Uh, so what we're gonna do to calculate the relative frequencies is just take each individual frequency and divide it by the grand total, okay? So to get the relative frequency for the grade of zero, we take the number two and we divide it by 25. So two out of 25, you can see we'll give you 0 0.08. And so that is your relative frequency for that particular datum. So this is all you do all along the way. Take the, the frequency, divide by the total. Four out of 25 is 0.16. Eight out of 25 is 0.32. Six out of 25 is 0.24. And finally, five out of 25 is 0.2. Okay. So that's all that it boils down to. If you want to calculate relative frequencies, Simply get, take the total, the total number of uh, tally, the total frequency, and divide each individual frequency by that total. Okay. Okay, so moving on, uh, looking at problem five, they tell you that a coin is being tossed three times and the number of heads is being observed. We want to determine the probability distribution. Okay. So in order to determine the probability distribution, what we need to do is um, first define a random variable X as the number of heads. So X counts the number of heads. Then what we're interested in is figuring out the following table, which is what are the possible values for X and what are the probabilities for those values? So we could have zero heads, one heads, two heads, or three heads. And then we want to figure out their probabilities. Okay. 
So let's see how we would figure out the probability for the first case. So what is P of X equals zero? What is the probability of getting zero heads? <clears throat> so what we wanna do is figure out what the count is for the, um, for the event that there are no heads. So that little N remember means count. What is the total, what is the number of ways of getting no heads? Right, versus the number of ways of tossing three times. Okay. All right. So, number of ways of getting no heads. Well, there are three slots, right? There are three slots that we need to fill. Each slot corresponds to the uh, number of the flip. So the first flip, second flip, and third flip, three slots. When we're asking about the number of ways of getting no heads, that's equivalent to saying that um, out of the three slots that we need to fill, zero of them will have a heads. Okay. So that is the same as three choose zero which remember is three factorial over zero factorial over three factorial, which we can quickly see is equal to one, remembering that zero factorial is defined to be one, okay? So zero factorial equals one, then we have three factorial divided by three factorial, so those cancel out and that leaves us with one. So there's exactly one way to get no heads. Okay, so how many ways are there of tossing the coin three times? Well, here we have um, three slots again. If we want this, this, in this case, it's easier to think of it this way. We have three slots and there are two possibilities for the first slot, a heads or a tails, two for the second slot, a heads or a tails, two for the third slot, heads or a tails. So that's two times two times two, which is eight. So to find the probability, it's the number of ways of getting no heads, which is one over the number of ways of tossing the coin three, coin three times, which is eight. So this is equal to one, eight. So we do a similar thing for P of X equals one. I'm gonna sort of cram this in. We say, what is three choose one now? That's three factorial over one factorial and two factorial. And that you can figure out equals three, okay? And by the way, there is a way to do this with the calculator. How to calculate these three choose one, for instance, how would I do it? So I hit number three, then I hit the math button. Then I scroll over to the probability menu. And then I go down to the third option, which is N choose R. So I've already put the N in, I've typed three in first then I choose this function and I tell it what the R will be, which is one. So that's three, choose one. And that spits out the number three. And so now if I need to do another one, I just hit second enter. It brings it back up and I can edit the function and get three, choose two or three, choose three. Okay. And so we can see ultimately what this calculation will look like because we'll do the three choose one and we'll always divide whatever that, we'll do the three choose whatever number we're interested in and whatever that result is, we'll divide by eight because that's the total number. So the next one is three choose eight, or I mean, sorry, three eights. The probability of getting a one, 
one heads out of three is, um, sorry, three eighths. If I want to find it for two, well, I go to three choose two, which is three again, and I divide it by eight. So it has the same probability, three eighths. And then for three heads, I do three choose three, which is one, and divide that by eight. So that's one eighth. So this is the whole probability distribution for tossing a coin three times. Notice that if you add up all of these probabilities, they add up to one. Remember, that's very important. You don't have a probability distribution unless all the probabilities add up to one. So one eighth plus three eighths plus three eighths plus one eighth equals eight eighths, which is one. Okay. So we'll go over one more problem. This is number 28 from the back of the book. Pull the book up real quick. Okay. And so in 28, we've been given a probability distribution and we're asked to do a, a few things with this distribution. So the first thing we're asked to do is to draw a histogram. Okay. So here we're just making the, the bars. We have a, um, a bar for one, which goes up to 0.3. We then have a bar for two, which is 0.4. We then have a bar for three, which is 0.2. And a ball bar for four, which is 0.1. So we really need a, a vertical axis here that sort of shows what the actual numbers are. And we did it by 0.1, jumps of 0.1, and there's our histogram. All right, part B, we're asked to find the probability that X equals two or X equals three, okay? So we know that how or probabilities work, or probabilities are like unions. We, we discussed this in the probability section. So this is really two union three, which we know should be um, the probability of two plus the probability of three minus the probability of two and three, okay? Now, <clears throat> uh, it's evident from this sort of setup that we can't both have a two and a three at the same time. It's not possible. And so what that means is that these events are mutually exclusive which means that the probability of two and three or two intersect three, this goes away, it's zero. So in order to compute two or three, we just need to add probability of two to the probability of three. So that's 0 0.40 plus 0 0.20, which equals 0.60, okay? Part C says find the probability that X is at least two. So what's the probability that X, big X, is less than or equal to two, okay? So this is the same, same thing as the probability of one or two, because if you're less than or equal to two, then you, those, are the only other, those are the only ways that you can be less than or equal to two. So calculating the probability of at least two. Um, oh, sorry, I, this is wrong, sorry. Where is the session? At least two 
means the probability that our big X is greater than or equal to two. So that's an easy mistake to make and I just made it. So don't get, don't think at least means less than, at least means greater than. So same idea, the ways of being at least two is the probability of being two or the probability of being three or the probability of being four. So all we have to do is add up all of those probabilities. That's 0 0.40 plus 0 0.20 plus 0 0.10, which is equal to 0 0.70. Okay. And the next part says find the probability. So part D says find the probability that x plus 2 is at least 5. Ooh. So what's the probability that x plus 2? is at least five. So that's the probability that we want to compute. Sorry, let me move that up. So this is a little seemingly a little tricky, but notice that the probability that X plus two is at least five is equal to, if I subtract the two on both sides of that inequality, it's equal to the probability that X is greater than or equal to three. And so all we have to do is say greater than or equal to three means either you're three or you're four. So again, we're just adding up those probabilities. We look at our table, probability of three is 0.2, probability of four is 0.1. So 0.2 plus 0.1 equals 0.30. And then finally, it asks us to find part E. I'm gonna move it up here. Uh, actually, I'll do it right here. So part E says, uh, find the distribution for two X. Okay, so we can do that right here at the table. We can say um, this is x is equal to k, so 2x would be equal to um, <clears throat> a different k, really 2k. So that would be either 2 or 4, because the next numbers would be 6 and 8, but there is no way to get 6 and 8. So the probability of 2x, or the distribution for um, 2x, just consists of the outcome for 2 and the outcome for 4. And the probabilities will just be twice these probabilities. So the probability of rolling a two will be <clears throat> the probability of, um, oh boy. So the probability of rolling a two will be 0 0.3 plus 0 0.4, which is 0 0.7. And the probability of rolling a four will be, uh oh, hold on, 2x distribution, 2x. Sorry, let me start this over again. So we're doing the uh, distribution for 2x. And so that means we could have a two, a four. We should consider the six and we should consider the eight. I was being dumb there, my bad. So these are all the possibilities for two X and the probability of two X being two is exactly the same as the probability of X being one. So it has the same distribution. And we'll see that all along the way that 
these these probabilities are exactly the same for 2x as they are for x. Because the only way that we get a 2 out of 2x is that we get a 1 for x, and the probability of getting a 1 for x is 0.3. So that means the probability of getting a 2 for 2x is 0.3, right? The how can we get a 4 for 2x? Well, that means we had to have gotten a 1 for x, which the likelihood of getting a 1 for x is 0.4. So again, the distribution for 2x is identical to the distribution for x.